Hi, I'm Niels Roca from George Washington as well. And kind of to follow up on that question, um, you talk about Google is definitely a for-profit institution. And you know, there's the old adage, almost a cliche, that information is power, knowledge is power. Um, and so to what extent, or, or why shouldn't we be concerned about the amount of power that uh, Google implicitly uh, is building by building this massive database with tons of information? particularly when they're increasingly, as we see with you know, the Gmail developments, now Google Calendar, increasingly amassing a lot of personal information, why shouldn't we feel uncomfortable with a private company where there's no democratic control um, from the general using public um, amassing that kind of information, potentially that amount of power? You should be concerned uh, about that. Uh, I mean, we have an inherent mistrust or distrust, and it's kind of built into us of institutions, whether they're for profit or not, that amass vast amounts of power. And the history of this country is replete with those kinds of institutions uh, ending up being regulated in Washington or uh, facing competitors who come running to Washington saying, hey, they're not playing fair, they're bullies out there in the marketplace, they're a monopoly, they're, you know, violating laws that, that that uh, essentially govern fair play among businesses. Um, so everybody needs to remember one really important thing. If you don't remember anything else that you hear today here, know that every time you do a search on Google, every single time you do a search on Google, it's saved and it knows which computer it's coming from. Okay? So the anonymity that you feel when you use Google is wonderful. But the reality is that they're saving every single search. Saving every search is how they make search better. It's how they personalize search to work better for you. But they're also amassing an incredible database, uh, as has been suggested by the question. And undoubtedly, uh, law enforcement authorities, divorce lawyers, and lots of other people are going to want access to that database. And recently, the Justice Department asked Google, Yahoo, uh, America Online and Microsoft's MSN for information from their databases, uh, for a vast amount of information for their databases that included one week's worth of all the searches done. Um, and Google was the only one among them who turned the Justice Department down. And they got into litigation with the Justice Department and said this is overly broad. And they ended up negotiating something with the Justice Department that would better protect the privacy of its users and that narrowed the scope of what the Justice Department was looking for. Now, Google didn't do this for altruistic reasons to help uh, men and women in the world, even though it had the benefit of sending out a message that Google, that Google uh, cares about protecting people's privacy. Google did this because they are very competitive out there. You guys know this is a competitive world. And Google did this because if they turned over a week's worth of searches on Google to the Justice Department and that information was out there for all their competitors to see, they were worried that they would lose a competitive advantage uh, if others could see how Google's being used, what people are searching for, what they're looking for, when are they clicking on those little text-based ads. I mean, don't forget, Google's free to use, right? And gives you free search results down the center of the page, but those little boxes down the side that, that are under the heading sponsored links, well, guess what? What does sponsored links mean? Those are ads. Those are ads. If they called them ads, fewer people would click on them. Okay, so they don't call them ads, they call them sponsored links. And every time you click on one of those little sponsored links uh, on the right hand side of the page or in the top two or three spots, the cyber cash register rings at Google and they get a nickel or a dime or a dollar or something from an advertiser. So you should worry about your privacy. Most privacy advocates say that you probably, um, if you're going to do your searching on Google, which most people do, you might want to do your emailing someplace else as a way to keep your information in other places. I go a step further, because I think all of that's a bunch of baloney. Anything, anytime you ever type into any computer at all is retrievable. So if you have a secret that's really a secret, don't type it into a computer, OK? I mean, anything you ever type into a computer is retrievable. So a lot of this debate, I think, is a bit academic because uh, forensic scientists and people who are really skilled in technology can retrieve all your little instant messages, all your emails, <laughs> all those chatty little things you've said, all those catty little things you've said, all those nasty little things you've said, it's all retrievable. 
It's all saved. And that's not just on Google. That's across the use of computers and the internet.